Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. Kansas becomes the third state in the country in 2013 to pass a very comprehensive and restrictive law regarding abortion. Kansas joins Arkansas and North Dakota. Hi, I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. These are significant developments. Liberty Council is involved in these areas of advancing the sanctity of human life. This particular legislation, Matt, in Kansas now passed in the House 92 to 31, and it says that the legislature finds and declares that, one, life of each individual human being begins at fertilization. Two, unborn children have interest in life, health, and well-being that should be protected. And three, the parents of unborn children have protectable interest in life, health, and the well-being of unborn children as such parents. And this bill now goes to the Senate, expected to pass there and then be signed by the pro-life governor, Sam Brownback. Matt, in, in a recent column I wrote, uh, the winds of life are blowing free the foul stench of a culture of death. You know, any one of these states uh, 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 passing these laws by themselves would be a really, really big deal, huge. Uh, one, of, one of the largest pro-life things to occur since Roe v. Wade. All three of them <laughs> coming down the pipe at the same time, there's a word for that. It's called momentum. And uh, this is earth-shaking stuff we're talking about here. This is a big deal. We cannot overstate what a big deal this is. Well, 2012, we saw more pro-life legislation passed among the states than we had in any previous decade, really. And now 2013 promises to be another year like 2012. Now we have Kansas that says life begins at fertilization. That's important because, obviously, that is a scientific fact that a new separate and distinct life begins at the moment of fertilization. Kansas also has other restrictions in this particular law, uh, but it, we, it, it joins North Dakota uh, that ultimately has the law that's the so-called heartbeat law that says that you can't have an abortion when a detectable heartbeat is found, and that's around six weeks. And then before that, you had Arkansas, and each one of these states was the most restrictive at the time. Arkansas had a law that says you can't have an abortion after 12 weeks. And then North Dakota says you can't have an abortion after six weeks. And now Kansas comes up and says that life begins at the moment of fertilization, which is the way it ought to be. Life is created at the moment of fertilization. Well, what this Kansas law in particular, but all three of them do, it takes a, a, a sledgehammer of reality to the nonsensical uh, bumper sticker talking points and rhetoric and euphemistic language that we hear coming from the left. You've seen the bumper stickers, the angry feminist bumper stickers that say, keep your laws off my body. Well, this law in Kansas says we're not talking about your body. We're talking about a separate and distinct individual that f the fertilization begins at conception, different blood type, we're a different individual human being, Matt. So we're not talking about anybody's laws being on your body. We're talking about protecting that unborn born child that so many have, have slaughtered within their own womb. Well, you know, when you look at every other area of law outside of abortion, whether it's torts, meaning personal injury, criminal law, trust in estates, wills, trust in estates, where you have a will of some property, property law, all of those areas recognize the rights of the unborn child. So, for example, if you injure someone who's pregnant, uh, you are liable for the injury to that person as well as to their unborn child in most states. Criminally, if you ultimately kill someone who's pregnant, in many states you're liable for a double, double murder, homicide. double homicide. Property law, a lot of times in many states, most states actually, if someone wills property and, and someone is carrying a child, then a guardian ad litem is appointed for that child to represent their interest because they have an interest in that property distribution when they ultimately are born. So in every different area of law, it has recognized and continues to recognize the humanity of the unborn child, except for abortion. Abortion just simply says, well, if a, 
if a third party wants to punch me in the stomach, I could ultimately sue that person for my own injury as well as for the injury to the unborn child. But if I want to kill my own child, then that's a choice. That's protected by the Constitution. That makes no sense. <laughs> it would make no sense to say if someone beat my child, that's some kind of child abuse. Uh, but if I uh, ultimately decide Allow to kill it. my child, then it's freedom of choice. It makes no sense. You've hit the nail on the head, Matt. We have been living since Roe v. Wade in this la-la land of leftist rhetoric, this fantasy world that uh, and there is, it has created an irreconcilable incongruity that you point out so well. You know, you remember the Scott Peterson case with Lacey Peterson mm -hmm. and uh, their, their little baby, and he was charged and convicted. Double homicide. Dub double homicide. But if Lacey Peterson, that very same day that she disappeared and murdered, had gotten in her car and d driven down to the Planned Parenthood and told the abortionist, I want you to kill my baby, not only would that abortionist not be up for murder, neither would Lacey Peterson. She could go back home, get pregnant again, and do it over and over and over again, as many women, unfortunately, do in this culture. And the tragedy that we all uh, experience with Sandy Hook, where this person came in and killed these innocent children horrific and it was shocking to the conscience well you have people that are abortionists do that every day in mass numbers kill children in the womb even late-term abortions in fact in Kansas where this law has just been passed by the house you had dr. Tiller his nickname was Tiller the killer because he did late-term abortions and he was ultimately a friend of Kathleen Sebelius, the then governor, who's now the current Secretary of Health and Human Services under Barack Obama. Very pro-radical abortion, friend of the late Dr. Tiller, friend of Planned Parenthood. Now in Kansas, where it was controlled by the abortion industry, where Tiller was and Planned Parenthood had a strong outreach and there had the governor Sebelius there. You now have a pro-life governor, you've got a pro-life legislature, and you've got the pro-life law that is being passed. In fact, this law says that uh, it not only has this moment of fertilization protection, but excludes abortionists from receiving tax breaks, prohibits the state medical schools, residents from performing abortions on state time, prohibits organizations that perform abortions from teaching sex education classes in school, and requires abortionists to notify women of the risk of an abortion. This is such good news. Uh, you know, the as we've talked about, the, the left-wing rhetoric here, the pro-abort rhetoric has been weighed on the scales and found wanting, certainly in Kansas, Arkansas, North Dakota. There is a massive change happening in America. Uh, we we uh, The seeds of life are taking root. This is exciting stuff. Now, obviously, Matt, uh, these cases are going to be uh, tried in, in court. They'll be challenged. The ACLU is champing, chomping at the bit to get this into court. What do you think the, the next, next steps are in, in terms of that? Well, I think, you know, Kansas, uh, Arkansas, and in North Dakota, they'll probably all be challenged. The ACLU and Planned Parenthood are saying that they're going to challenge them. And it'll go up through the court. You just don't know what the courts are going to do. We know that in 2000, the Supreme Court struck down a law coming out of Kansas, out of Nebraska, actually, that banned the late-term brutal partial birth abortion. But then in 2007, reversed, the same justice wrote the opinion and upheld the same law that ultimately bans this brutal late-term abortion, a law that was supported uh, or opposed by the president. Uh, he even said that that law that banned the late-term brutal the partial birth never abortion, yeah. that, that he was opposed to having a law that uh, banned this brutal procedure. Shocking. So, in, you know, we'll see what hap ultimately happens, but I think what, see what we're seeing is more and more pro-life legislation coming down the pipe. The current millennial generation is more pro-life even than the older generation, so good signs are on the horizon to restore America to a culture of life. Yeah, well, I'm excited. You talk about, you know, partial birth abortion, for instance. Finally, uh, the ban was upheld for, for that, something that the American Medical Association and others have said is never necessary under any circumstances. Yet Barack Obama, Planned Parenthood, and others th threw a fit when that happened. That shows that their their motives here aren't really about you know a woman's right to choose. Their motives are uh, pro-abortion. Liberty Council has a project. It's called Life United. I encourage you to go to lifeunited.org. That's lifeunited.org. This is a project of Liberty Council in conjunction with Jib Bob and Michelle Duggar. They are the TV stars of the popular TV reality show, 19 Kids and Counting. And we're also partnering with other pro-life organizations to have a one-stop website with information and resources for crisis pregnancy centers and other kinds of information 
that you can send people to, go to lifeunited.org. We're continuing to put more resources into this website. It's a combined effort of a number of different organizations, and it's a project of Liberty Council. I would encourage you also to call Liberty Council 800-671-1776 and to support this ministry with your financial support and your prayers. Without your prayers and financial support, Liberty Council would not be able to advance religious freedom, the sanctity of human life, and the family. Go to lc.org. That's lc.org. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.